It's a bird. It's a plane. It's the behind the scenes for our homemade Superman scene. Man of Steel just hit theaters, but the 1978 Superman movie was my all-time favorite movie for my entire childhood. I literally wanted to be Superman when I grew up. You can ask my mom. So I was really excited to do a scene from this movie. So just ran across the street at full speed with a full speed car going by, revealing the S. Sort of been a lifelong dream of mine. I've probably done it many times in the past, but this time we got it on camera, so it's official. So I basically already had the whole Superman outfit because we did the Man of Steel trailer a while back. But it's really just a blue sweater, blue sweats, sort of hot glued it around to make it a little bit tighter on my wrists and my legs. I updated it, used some fabric, made the yellow utility belt. Instead of using boots, used red knee-high socks. The cape was just some pieces of fabric that I salvaged together from a big sports jersey type thing. So I just cut out two pieces, I glued them together, almost a full length cape. I was gonna change the S. Look, the S's are different between these films. So technically it is the Man of Steel S, but figured only some of the super fans might notice. Hey, it's a Superman S, it works. In Man of Steel, Zack Snyder's Superman does not have the red underwear, but look, we're doing the 1978 version. You gotta have the red underwear. So just pop them on top of the sweats there. You're good to go. Lois has this funky yellow jacket suit thing. So we found a yellow coat that was pretty close to the color. And then I just did all the trim with black tape. It looks like runway Charlie Brown. For Lois Lane, we reached out to our friend Hari because she actually looks and sounds a lot like Margot Kidder. You know, a homeless man once told me I looked like Margot Kidder, so I think this is going to be perfect. There are a handful of shots where Lois and Superman are falling or flying in front of a building. We came up with this idea to have the background on this long strip of fabric on a PVC pipe that we could pull. So the camera stays still and we stay still and then the building just scrolls. We just sprayed tons of windows and all the lines and kind of matched the look of the building so that way when we stand in front of this thing, John and Sean on either side behind us can just pull it really fast in either direction and it's taped together so it's a big continuous loop. When you're standing in front of this thing, it looks pretty ridiculous but on camera, it looks like we're all moving and the building is staying still. It was a lot of timing. She's falling, so the building is going one way. I have to swoop in, catch Lois, and the building stops, because we stop, and then it changes direction as we start flying up. So kind of a tricky one to get all the beats together in the right order. I'm not the tallest person, so I'm standing on some little production boxes to make myself taller. Usually I'm shorter than Lois Lane. Happened in our Man of Steel trailer, and it happened again here. So it was a little tricky to actually pop up into frame and then stand on those boxes and not fall off. Don't worry, miss. Whoa, fell off the box. <laughs> okay. And then in some of the shots where they're flying up past the building, Superman is holding on to the bottom of the helicopter. So I just used some pipe and just made that one little section so that I could grab onto it. And then some of the shots, I'm just actually holding it up in the air, which is probably what they did in the real movie. Hey, it's Jim, Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> hey, Jim, we're flying over here. We're just flying, we're just flying up. Then there's a lot of miscellaneous shots of Lois Lane, either like dangling from the helicopter, we just kind of had her laying on the ground and just sort of faked it as if it was the top of the building. And then there's some other dangling ones where you're supposed to see the city in the background. So we have this awesome play mat that we got from our friend Monica that her kids used to play with. And this thing comes in really handy because if you need a city and streets, it's perfect. So we used that a few times for one of the shots where Superman flies up away from this little fake city. And then also used it where Lois Lane is hanging. We even just had her lay back on our little bench thing that we built for the Matrix. And then we held the city mat up in the background behind her and then she's supposed to be pulling on like a seat belt strap so I'm holding the camera and then I end up just putting the strap in my mouth so I could kind of pull it tight shoot this way and it looks like she's dangling down but everything is just sideways <laughs> There are a lot of shots of the crowd down on the street looking up and seeing this whole thing unfold above them. So we invited a bunch of friends over and just had some food and got out the box of wigs. And they had a ball switching wigs between shots, coming up with these weird wacky characters. That's a spicy meet the bull. It was just dress up day here at the house. Wow! So what is the name of your new uh, classic rock album? Oh, it's called Oh Baby. It's called Oh Baby? Even though it was mostly just about getting a crowd, I did try and match a couple of the specific things like, oh, this person has this kind of shirt, this person has this wig, this guy has a mustache, this guy has glasses, and then like a cop in the front, and then some specific ladies or whatever. But for each shot, we just kind of mixed everybody around and tried to match sort of close. And even in one of the shots, there's like an old timey film camera. So I used one of my modern video cameras and we just built a cardboard top for the two film canisters. So, you know, little details like that 
to kind of help sell the whole thing. How's it work? <laughs> it's good, but I can't get the footage yeah. into the computer. Oh, what's this computer you speak of? <laughs> it's 1978. There's one funky dude who sees Superman come out in his costume, and so we got the hat and the outfit kind of for that. It's a really funny little moment. Then we even did a forced perspective shot for that one too, where there's some close-ups of this guy and these two ladies, but then in the shot where Superman actually does fly away, we filmed them live action and then put the car and the little Superman toy up close to the camera so they'd look larger so that way he can fly right out of the shot. For the miniature stuff, I needed to make a little action figure for Lois and for Superman. For some reason, could not find a Superman at that same kind of like G.I. Joe size, so I had to make one. So I took one of our G.I. Joes, shaved all the excess pieces off, and shaved his head, and then painted the skin back on, painted the suit, made the S, cut the cape out of a piece from the actual cape, and then made a Lois with a little uh, yellow skirt there, and just did some yellow paint, and tried to get them to look like Lois and Superman. But we actually did these at different scales. We have the G.I. Joe scale, and we made a building to match that. They fly in front of that a few times. There's a shot of Superman swooping up, but there's a long version of that building. We shot that actually on the floor sideways so that the long building could just be slid past and then Superman swoops up. But then we needed to make a smaller version of them too because we had to get some larger shots of the whole building and the whole roof with the helicopter. So the helicopter is tiny. It's like Hot Wheels size, which means you have to have even tinier little people to go next to it. So I had to make a tiny Superman and a tiny Lois to go next to the tiny helicopter. Otherwise, we'd be building a huge building with lights and a huge helicopter so we did smaller version of that building put the small helicopter on it and we ended up putting little lights across the top and these were some twinkly lights that we had left over from when I made the flux capacitor and the funny thing is that the flux capacitor is still attached to this thing because I don't want to tear it apart so every time we use these lights now we have to like use the flux capacitor and keep it nearby so it's always with us we're doing a miniature shot here where our Superman flies away from the street but we're doing it in two different scales because we've got the little car here with the little people but we've got this Superman. I thought it might be too hard to use the little tiny Superman for this, so instead of starting him right here, where he's a giant, start him back. When you look at it straight on, he's a lot smaller, so he looks like he matches them a little bit better. And then when he comes up, he flies away. So not only do we have the tiny Superman, the medium Superman, I also used a seven inch Superman for the one shot where he flies off in front of the people just because it was more detailed and I already had that one. Action. That's a bad outfit. There is one really iconic moment at the beginning of this scene where Superman goes through the revolving door really fast and he comes out in his full Superman outfit. But it's kind of tricky to find a revolving door like that. So we thought about maybe building one, but uh, we ended up using my back door because it has kind of two similar shaped doors. And it was just a combination of me running through it while it was half open, and then I run around really fast in the Clark outfit, then I run around really fast in the Superman outfit, and then I emerge as Superman and kind of just dissolve between them and mix them together. And that one was a little tricky. <laughs> <laughs> music was a big deal on this one because the music is super iconic. I shouldn't say super. The music on this is totally iconic. It's a classic score, and since I grew up watching this movie over and over, the music is just embedded in my brain. So I was really excited to sit down and do my acapella version of the whole thing. Once again, microphone, me, lots of tracks, lots of weird sounds and instruments that I just make with my voice, and somehow I end up with sort of the whole John Williams score. Acapella. <laughs> Well, let me know if you have any other questions about how we made our homemade Superman scene, and I'll try and write back in the comments below. Let us know what other scenes and trailers you want us to try, and subscribe to Cinefix, because we've got new episodes every Tuesday. So we'll see you next week. Up, up, and away! Oh, I'm right back. On their building, one of the lights is out, so I'm gonna take one of our lights out. The Mark Tyson is the greatest! Baggy suit. This is my daddy's suit. No one can believe it! No one can believe it! What's that? Oh no, it's not a bird or a plane. Let's do brunch! If you need me, I'll be in my tailor. Bum <laughs> <laughs>